In my last video, I reviewed the latest info on Intel Arc and why Intel GPUs won't save us. So what will? How will this market ever return to MSRP? There are several things in motion that will hit a tipping point next year where we can see this whole market unwind. What are they and when will they occur? Let's get into it. It has now been one year since Nvidia launched the RTX 3080 and 3090 GPUs, and these two Ampere-based cards turned out to be a very nice performance upgrade over the 2080 Super and the 2080 Ti. Last year I was so excited for how AMD was going to respond with Big Navi and RDNA 2, and here I am, a year later, still without either GPU as they are insanely priced. Those GPUs cost more than complete PCs I've built in the past. This market has been extremely frustrating for a gamer looking to purchase a GPU at MSRP. In my video in December, I stated that if I wasn't able to get a card by March, then this could be the lost generation. I then followed that up in March, reiterating that this is the lost generation. Many YouTubers have bought into the idea that this is just the new reality and that GPUs will now just be more expensive forever. Gamers will just have to pay more for their GPUs forever. Well, forever is a long time. Prices can only remain this high if the fundamental costs like component costs or manufacturing costs are causing these high prices. However, in my previous video, we know that the material cost and the manufacturing cost of these GPUs did not fundamentally drive these high prices. Neither did inflation. Go look at the price of CPUs. Go look at the price of RAM and SSDs. Why aren't they hit that hard by inflation? No, the very high prices of GPUs is only due to the demand for more money. Crypto money. As a result, AMD and Nvidia are making record profits and record margins and they don't want their shareholders to believe that this could end. So they want to turn the narrative to, the unprecedented demand is caused by gamers and that there is an unlimited supply of gamers and that gamers will just keep paying more. They don't want their shareholders to think that, like before, this is due to a mining bubble and that mining bubble is going to burst and sales of GPUs will then drop significantly, and so will profits. If you were an investor, would you pay more for their stock if their financial success was based on a mining boom? Now that we understand the motive for the narrative, and if you still believe the prices of GPUs are driven by gamers, then you would see that the price level of the GPU would be determined by its gaming performance. Why aren't the GPUs priced based on performance in gaming? Why is a GPU such as the RTX 3060, which is less than 20% more expensive than the GTX 1660 Super, when the 3060 performance is more than 40% higher? Why wouldn't the 3060 be priced 40% higher? Also, why is the 2-year-old RX 5700 XT at over $1,000 more than 20% higher in price than its replacement, the RX 6700 XT? The 5700 XT is 25% slower in performance, but 20% higher in price? If it's gamers, then the 6700 XT should be 25% higher in price, but it's not. Also consider this, all GPUs within the last five years are profitable and just by running them on a rig, they make money which has driven up their resale prices up to their original MSRP or higher. Five year old or more GPUs like the RX 580, the Fury, GTX 980 Ti, GTX 1060, Gamers after a 5 year period have never paid MSRP or higher on that old of a GPU, ever. But if it makes money, a miner will. Watch my previous video if you want to understand how a miner values GPUs. To return to MSRP, the driving force has to be removed. That means the profitability of GPU mining has to drop. What we can learn from GPU mining is that it always goes through a cycle. We are in the middle of that cycle. Some prefer to call it a bubble. This is the biggest and longest GPU mining bubble we have ever been in. When you are in the middle of a bubble, you think it's going to last forever. We have had multi-year bubbles in the past. Remember the housing boom that happened just before the Great Recession? How about the dot-com boom that ended in the 90s? Both were long economic boom cycles, and in the middle of those booms, people just thought it was going to last forever. Crypto mining has had several boom cycles, and the good news is for GPU mining bubbles, they always burst. All bubbles have a pattern, and that pattern can be broken down into five stages. Of the five stages, we are currently in the euphoria and profit-taking stage. That is why you see the value of Bitcoin dithering. It hit a high of over $60,000 and then dipped down to $30,000, and it has since struggled to gain traction to get up to that previous high. 
The dithering is from having people arriving late to market still in the euphoria phase, while people who got in early now are in the profit-taking phase. The good news is that we are moving past the middle and moving into the later stages of this boom, and again, it won't last forever. Big changes are coming next year that will cripple GPU mining profits and trigger the end of this boom. GPU miners will not mine if it is not profitable, and when it becomes unprofitable, the bubble will break. EIP-3554 is the Ethereum Improvement Proposal to implement a difficulty bomb. Once that is implemented, it has the effect of making mining Ethereum infinitely difficult and thus results in almost no rewards that can be earned. In other words, no more profits. If you look at the GPU mined crypto market, you can find that Ethereum is the dominant coin and it has been very profitable in this current mining cycle. With Ethereum gone, where will all this hashing power go? To understand where all the hashing power of GPUs could go, let's look at a mining model that was developed by Carter over at Bitsby Trippin. This guy has been doing mining since the early days, so he knows his stuff. Check out his channel if you want to learn more. I'll put a link in the description below. His model lists the top GPU mine networks and the total hashing power in gigahash per second on each one. The one pie chart showing all of the hashing power shows Ethereum versus all of the others, and this one was really shocking. It shows that Ethereum mining represents over 86% of the total network hashing power, while all the other ones put together only add up to 14%. To understand this magnitude even better, I took his data and plotted a bar chart for comparison of the top 10 networks on his list. When you look at the other popular coins being mentioned for GPU mining like Beam, Conflux, and Ravencoin, you can see that the hash rate power on those networks are orders of magnitude lower than the hash power on the Ethereum network. So you have to ask yourself, how can 86% of the total hash power be absorbed onto those other networks once the difficulty bomb is detonated and ETH 2.0 goes live? It would be like taking all the fishermen in all the oceans and then dumping them onto your local lakes and ponds. There will not be enough fish to feed everyone. Dumping that much hash power onto all the other networks will have the same effect as there will not be enough rewards to make GPU mining profitable once ETH 2.0 goes live. Some people estimate that 90% of Ethereum mining is based on GPUs. For GPU miners mining Ethereum, that will be an abrupt transition. When will that take place? Well, that date is targeted for quarter one of 2022. However, I will caution that the move to proof of stake has moved several times over the years. However, they are more motivated than ever to making that happening since they actually have more than $23 billion tied up in staked Ethereum and they can't keep pushing it off for more than a year before people will lose confidence. My best estimate is that it will get delayed to the summer and then delayed to quarter four of 2022 since the developers need to ensure a smooth transition. But it would not surprise me if it spilled into quarter one of 2023. But that date is coming. By the way, if you like videos like these, hit that like button and subscribe for more and let me know in the comments below if you will be waiting to get a newer GPU at MSRP even if it was delayed till late 2022. Some people believe that EIP 3554 won't happen next year and that it will be delayed for years, but it won't stop the GPU mining bubble from moving into the final stage. How? We'll cover that next time. If you want to understand how this boom has impacted the mid-range GPU or understand the driving forces for GPU prices, click on one of these. Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe and I will see you in the next one.